Welcome to the Business Owner Spotlight Series. My name is Gabriel Moore. I am the senior partner and head coach here at Action Coach Vanguard in Central Iowa. Today, I have Mindy and Paul Dayton, the owner of Foot and Ankle Center of Iowa, as my guests. We're going to be talking about their business, journey to business ownership, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what it's really like to own and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop new conversations just like this one. Mindy and Paul, welcome and thank you so much for being here today. Thank, thank you. Gabriel. Thank you for having us. Yes. Absolutely. Please give me a brief overview of your background and tell us a little bit about your business. Go ahead. Well, um, Paul and I are both foot and ankle surgeons and so podiatrist. We opened Foot and Ankle Center of Iowa in 2018. Um, so we had practiced in large groups prior to that, but just felt a need to change up our practice care model. We wanted to be able to focus more on the patient experience um, as well as really wanted to be business owners. So we'd always kind of had, had that itch. Um, we've owned a couple other businesses uh, in the past, and so uh, we decided, hey, let's take a leap of faith kind of mid-career and um, open our business and practice. Uh, we also developed a, a new procedure for bunions called lapoplasty. And we really wanted to bring that front and center and be able to specialize our practice uh, focused on that. And so going into private practice and opening our own uh, business allowed us that opportunity. Wow. And that's something that you offer. Is that something that's only offered at your location uh, here in central Iowa? Um, actually, the procedure lapoplasty is offered all over the country now. It's grown over the last nine years from from something that was uh, uh, an idea that we developed to now it's a it's a company that uh, provides instrumentation and um, support for surgeons across the country. Wow. Yeah, and so homegrown in Iowa? Oh, yeah, homegrown in Iowa. Homegrown in Iowa. We love it. <laughs> we love starting yeah. things here. We don't like to be the late the late tenders, right? We want to be the trendsetters. Absolutely. And as Mindy said, um, you know, that that's a, a big part of, I think, why we d decided to go out on our own. It's interesting in medicine um, over the last probably 30 to 40 years, I'm in my 30th year of practice. Oh. Um, it's it, the model of, of medicine has changed from doctors coming out and opening up their business, their own office, having a private practice to um, really um, most providers are coming out of residency and, and looking for a job. So looking for a job with a group, um, groups are getting bigger and bigger. And so we've kind of lived that whole life. I, I came out of my residency and then uh, worked for a big medical group in California and then came to Iowa and worked for a big medical group here. Um, and as we kind of grew in our practice and, and again, with this procedure, lapoplasty, we really felt um, to some degree we were being limited by, you know, being in this large organization with all of the kind of top down administration. Sure. And we it was, again, as Mindy said, a leap of faith. But we thought, you know, there's an opportunity for us to really take what we do and specialize and and move forward with it. So um, that was kind of the genesis of our our private practice. OK, that's this is a great segue into my next question, because, you know, as doctors, you had you like you had mentioned the 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 common denominator between coming out of residency is to start was to start your own practice. And then now um, your 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 perception of the of the industry now is when they come out, they're looking for a practice to go work for or for or a, uh, maybe a hospital or some other type of uh, medical facility. And so if that's the case, so then today you are now the business owners and doctors, you know, something here at Action Coach, we view those as very separate roles in a business. So how do you manage how many hours are you actually working in the business, maybe as doctors, maybe as um, administration, depending on what you're doing? Um, and then how many hours are you actually working on on your business where it is strategic growth and things of that nature? What does that look like? 
Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and that's something that is a work in progress especially yeah. for me because yeah. starting out as a smaller business, now we're growing. Uh, there's actually three doctors in our group. We have another partner, Dr. Jessica Kaldenberg Leppert. And that's we've awesome. grown pretty quickly from two staff members to now six staff members. So um, as we've grown and expanded, um, I do the majority of the business operations. Okay. So I probably am in clinic about on average, we're going to put it in hours, about 16 hours between clinic and surgery a week. Okay. Um, and then the rest of the time, which is obviously well beyond the 40 hours, I won't say probably how many. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're pushing, you know, depending on the week, anywhere to 60 plus um, running the business, doing the business. And yeah. so that's been a steep learning curve um, for us and for me, figuring out how we get the right people in place so I can yeah. delegate um, so I don't have to take away from my my clinical practice um, and so that we can continue to grow um, because that's what we're in the process of doing right now, if you want to. Yeah. 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 I uh, So I. Um, my week is usually about 30 hours of clinical work. Um, okay. so either in surgery or seeing patients in the office, um, I do, uh, s help out with some of the administrative stuff, although Mindy really takes the lead on that. She's, she's definitely the maintenance man. She's fantastic. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> and I fix things around the office and <laughs> right. <laughs> build things if we need it. Um, but outside of the clinical, my role is, um, in education and um, and uh, research. Mm -hmm. We've Excellent. published a lot of uh, medical research and a lot of studies based on our patients, and we're involved in some national studies. And I do a lot of travel on weekends to go do training programs and and train wow. surgeons. So so I'm kind of I'm kind of on the educational side more than I am the operations side. That's kind of how we've divided up our kind of divide and conquer so sure yeah having a partnership like yours it's almost necessary right it's uh it gives you guys the ability to split those roles and and just decide on you know who's going to play the ceo who's going to uh manage the office who's going to manage the operations on the clinical side and um how does that do, do you feel <laughs> do you feel that you guys work well together i mean how what does that look like yeah, that we get that question all the time, and and thankfully, I guess we like each other because we we work <laughs> well together. We're we're very like minded. We're both um, very passionate people about what we're doing, not only in the surgical and clinical realm, but very entrepreneurial. Um, you know, and and have the same desire to to grow our business, to be involved in the community. Um, so it it works well. You know, I think that in situations like ours, you most of the time learn how to compartmentalize work and personal life. And it's just most of the time, it's either a learned behavior or it's, it, you know, it's a little bit innate in, in who you are and, and what motivates you as well. But um, yeah, it's actually fun because as Paul mentioned, the traveling, you know, I don't travel quite as much as he does to, to teach, but I do that as well. Uh, so we get to travel together to, to share a passion for bunion surgery also and, and, be in the clinic uh, together. We usually are, you know, opposite uh, parts of the the building, yeah. <laughs> doing doing our thing. But um, yeah, it, it works well, and and it out it actually helps because from a home standpoint too, we both understand what each other are going through, and right. so you know, it helps right. us navigate the home duties of which he takes on a lot of them uh, not only maintenance man but <laughs> jokingly call him the butler too he's great about laundry and dishes so i'm very fortunate <laughs> it, it's been a it's been uh an interesting journey i obviously I, i'm uh i've been in practice many years mindy hasn't been in practice quite as many years but you learn i think with anything is just part of maturing to let the people that have the strengths take the lead and do the work and step back. And, and I think things work much, much better if, if, you know, you, you just let the person that, that has the skill or the desire or the passion to do it without having to feel like you have to be involved in every single decision. Mm -hmm. um, I think when I was younger, maybe that would have been a little harder to do, <laughs> but, uh, but it, it it works really well for us. It's that really actually good. brings me to something else, Paul, because, you know, uh, and, and 
with doctors, I could imagine that this might even be much tougher than many other professions um, out there. Um, there's so much prestige behind uh, being a doctor, right? Um, at least from the public's point of view. Um, I'm not so sure how you guys look at it internally, uh, but from the public's point of view, there's a lot of prestige to being a doctor. And with that kind of pressure, um, I, a lot of our business owners that we coach have trouble releasing the reins of certain things and doing the things that you just mentioned, which is allowing them to be experts in the field. And you don't have to be the expert in whatever skill or role that they're playing in. You don't have to be an expert in each one of them. And as a matter of fact, the best business owners are generalists, not specialists. And so it has has the transition from uh, where you where you were as a doctor to uh, and, and you as well, Mindy, as to that ownership role, has that been like a letting letting that prestigious part go a little bit, or how have you handled that? I I mean, I'll start. I, I know Mindy will have uh, uh, really great things to say too, but um, I, I think there's definitely. Um, a change. So, you know, doctors, physicians are, are very strong-minded and, and tend to be controlling um, and it, it becomes hard. And I, I think just my perceptive perception or the change that I've gone through from being in a group where in a group you're, you know, all you are is a doctor. So, you know, you're very, you hold on to that very strongly. You hold on to your ideas, your beliefs, sometimes hard to change. And when you transition into where we are now running a business, you you just you can't do that anymore. You have to you you have to let go of your own some of your own personal beliefs and and take a bigger picture uh, look at the at the situation. And it mm -hmm. kind of just I don't we've never really talked about this before, but for us, I think it just kind of came naturally. Mindy is very, very good at at human resources and people skills and and honestly, the nuts and bolts of running a business and getting things done. Um, and so it was pretty easy to just let her take the lead because she shines in that. So, well, that I think cool. yeah, go ahead. you mentioned, Gabriel, was about being the generalist. So mm -hmm. I learned early on that we needed to have um, other right key people in place to partner with. So, you know, accounting, bookkeeping, yeah. not that at all so you know we right away got a got a, a great accountant um you know a, a great attorney to look over you know whether it's my handbook uh for employees or yeah. contracting you know the things that i knew a little bit about um i have a master's in healthcare administration so i've always Very had that business uh early acumen i guess or, or general yeah. um so we learned that early on what I personally am in the process of um, recovering from, I guess, is <laughs> to put it, is having to be in charge of everything. So right now I'm working through, like I mentioned earlier, as we're growing, you know, we have three sites. Um, currently we're in Ankeny, Grimes, and Des Moines, and okay. we're going to be expanding up to Fort Dodge actually in April as well. That's a long so jump. <laughs> Yes. Um, so learning that I can't manage it all. So getting mm -hmm. working on getting internally the key people in place to delegate to. And it's it's a challenge. It is because it's as a business owner, um, you know, this this is our baby. This is our blood, sweat and tears, you know, our our life investment and our personal um, and professional investment. So it is hard to loosen those reins sometimes and give people uh, more latitude and, and ask them to step into roles. But I'm learning, I've been really working on it hard over the past probably three to six months. Um, and I'm, I'm learning that I'm, I go, go home feeling better in the evenings, you know, That's maybe good. not the first month or two, because I was still having to <laughs> double check everything um, or still think about it, but it's, it's feeling better. And it's, it's freeing me up a little bit to be less stressed and just enjoy what I'm doing even more. It's uh, it's really a matter of getting like the right people on the bus, right? And, and, and in the right seats, because there are so many seats on the bus and you might have to actually juggle people around. And uh, it's probably pretty easy sometimes to uh, when somebody doesn't do it right to step in and maybe even do it for them um, 
we have uh, a tendency as as business owners to step in when maybe we shouldn't. And by the way, I'm not presuming that that's what you do in any way. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure you could probably relate for sure. Um, it's it's this is absolutely fascinating. Let's let's shift gears for a moment, if that's all right. I want to talk about something that every business um, has to deal with, and because uh, we are all in sales, we all are selling something um, uh, in, in to make a, a profit to grow our business to help more people, right? And in in your case, uh, I want to know. I want to talk about how you market for those sales specifically. What does your target look like? Who does your business serve primarily? If I were if I were uh, the your perfect audience member, what do I look like? What's happening to me? Why would I? Uh, why would I give you guys a call? Yeah, it, it, it that's going to be a tough answer to kind of <laughs> whittle it down. Um, okay. Foot foot and ankle problems are extremely common. Obviously, you know, especially in an active population, it ranges from sports injuries like ankle sprains and fractures to deformities like bunions, um, which we deal with a lot. 30% of the population has a bunion. Um, so that's a pretty big, pretty big market. Um, but everything from infections to, I mean, it's a wide, wide ranging. So our demographic really goes from very young children and babies to elderly people and everything wow. in between. Now, when we talk about bunions, you're probably talking about a narrower group um, you know, in the 18 to maybe 60 uh, year old range. Okay. Um, and when you're talking about bunions, it, it happens to be a very female predominant problem. Okay. Um, 80% or more of- uh, Whoa, people. why is that though? Why is, why is that more female? We don't, I mean, we don't know for sure. People want to blame it on shoes. It's uh, probably not the shoes that do it. Um, we, we, there's obviously some genetic predisposition, but it is very heavily weighted toward, uh, toward females. Um, so in our, in our business, it's easier, I guess it's easier to get a target demographic for bunions than it is for just foot and ankle, uh, care. People with feet. Everybody, yeah. Kind of thing. Everybody, yeah. <laughs> everybody, yeah. Yeah. And, and I think to, I agree with all of that. I think the other thing to add is what's helped us be successful, I think, in quote unquote, if you will, selling our services to the mm -hmm. people that come in, whether that's surgery or products such as custom orthotics or getting them onto the right supplementation to help their bone strength, mm -hmm. is that we only do the things that we believe in. Um, we're very evidence-based, we're very research-oriented, we're very protocol-driven. Mm -hmm. So when a patient comes in to see us, they don't know what they, they just want to feel better, right? That's their goal. Sure. They don't know what, yep. they have, what they need. Um, and we're able to, I think, very effectively educate them on what's going on, what their diagnosis is, why they're having the problem, and really outlining our treatment steps um, very clearly to them. So right. it makes it, if you will, if we're talking in business terms, an right. easy um, because we're not having to him and haw, well, this might be going on or that, or maybe we should do this or that. Sure. We believe in what we're offering and when we offer it to patients. Yeah, in my mind, it, it means that you understand the value and how to impress upon them the value of what you offer. So, you know, when we don't, we don't want people focused on how much things cost. We want to foc them to focus on what they're getting for what they're spending. Right. And, and it sounds like you guys have that uh, pretty well handled. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things, I mean, just looking back at the transition from, you know, working at a big group and having limited, if any control over the day-to-day business and staffing and you know you're you're just going and seeing patients right uh, we a uh, high priority in our practice and and we started this as soon as we we went into private practices staff education um Very having good. staff understand us understand what we do understand every part of it so we um we spend time and and time is money obviously in business but it's yeah. worth that time in staff meetings every week and they always include operations as well as an educational component so wow. that everybody's on the same page and again we're protocol driven and and since there's right now just three surgeons hopefully soon to be four 
Right. Um, we can do things by protocol. So every everything is done in an evidence-based protocol driven way. And so everybody's on the, everybody's on the same page. Um, it makes it so much easier. And I, again, look back to my big group days where, you know, you'd have 10 doctors in the office, everybody's doing it a different way. All of the staff don't understand it because complete chaos. Yeah. It, 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 it you know, I hate to say chaos, but in a, in a <laughs> sense it was, you really don't have yeah. control over the day to day. And so then that translates to patient experience a hundred percent, because if they're hearing the same thing from us that they hear from our staff, both in the front of the office and the back of the office, that's a very po powerful, um, you know, educational component for the patient and a, and a very powerful uh, patient experience component as well. Yeah, it sounds like congruency, right? I mean, it uh, it keeps you all glued together under the same umbrella of knowledge. And I think that um, that's that's huge that you would uh, are able to get your staff on board with a lot of the technical things that you might be doing. And it may be not details and stuff, but enough to where they can have um, respectful conversations with the patients, right? Where um, everybody could probably have that conversation with a patient and the patient not feel like one or two people inside of your organization really just don't know what they talk about. Do you know where you work right now? You know, it's not, it doesn't come off that way. So systemizing or systematizing uh, a business is probably one of the most underrated values of business operations. Um, as human beings, we tend to think that we can manage things from our head and on the fly. And when we do, we feel better about it. And it. Uh, I'm very glad that you take systems as um, or protocol as uh, a highly valued thing inside of your organ organization, because like you said, it creates those efficiencies that make you guys look even far better than you would definitely without them. Absolutely. Yeah, um, it makes the day go smooth. Yeah. 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 We call it, we, and the reason why I brought up the word chaos before is because we call it controlling the chaos, turning chaos from chaos to control. Cause it's a, it's a big deal and it's, and it's worth the time and the effort and the money that you're putting into that to make it happen. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the, uh, well, let's, let's look at this. So what's one thing you wish more people knew about your business? That's a great question. Um, I guess medicine is interesting uh, when you talk about the business of medicine, because we don't have anything like consumer reports, really, right? You know, we don't have, sure. can't go out and search what's the best car for what I need. Um, really, the only proxy we have, honestly, is Google reviews, um, you know, and they assume that the care is going to be the, the same everywhere, both in the approach and what's provided and, and the outcomes. And I think the number one thing I want people to know about us is that we truly focus on that patient experience. And I'm, I'm really confident that um, they're going to get the, not only the best, have the best experience, but have the best outcome because of everything that we talked about, because of yeah. our systems, our protocols, um, our engagement with, with our staff. So I guess business-wise, not not all are created equal when it comes to foot and ankle. Um, and, and we're proud to say that, um, you know, again, the proxy or Google reviews show that as well. But I, I think that just the word of mouth that we've gotten um, referrals for marketing, you know, you asked about kind of how do you market. Right. I think. Um, we haven't done up to this time a lot of quote unquote marketing besides getting sure. engaged in the community, getting involved with our chamber, which we're very passionate about. Um, but it's been a lot of word of mouth from happy patients and and happy providers that refer to us because of our approaches. Yeah, thank you, Google, right, for offering that. Yes. Yeah, yeah we. Um, I, I would say we do a lot of marketing, but it wouldn't be mark. It wouldn't fall into what most people I think would think if you say marketing, right? Would be print ad or or other types of advertising. Our sure. marketing really has been and it may not even be the right term, but I call it public relations. Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, we meet with people in the community uh, multiple times a week. We have meetings at the office. We go to their places. 
Um, we educate them on what we do, and we have a sincere interest in learning what they do. So we try to develop personal relationships and partnerships with people. I think that's why we've been able to um, grow through basically through education. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess that falls into marketing, right? It's we're trying to, you know, get the word out on on what we do. Um, but that that's almost just natural. I think Mindy didn't say it because that's just part of our day. I mean, when I look at my schedule, there's multiple meetings during the week with other business owners, other providers, um, other people that we meet with to to learn about and to have them learn about us. That, yeah, it is absolutely a form of marketing. And, and there's a couple ways to look at that uh, as, um, you know, strategic partnerships or strategic alliances, public relations, like what you were talking about, branding in general, just being out there in the community like you are, it, it should increase organic growth. And really, it's it's not necessarily organic. To me, I look at our organic as referral-based only. And it means that I get one customer and the next customer comes in because they told somebody. That, to me, is the most pure of organic growth. But yeah, it sounds like you are utilizing some marketing that is incredibly beneficial for you, um, especially maybe on the strategic alliance side where you're meeting people and learning from what they do and, and you know, they might be giving... Uh, you might be giving them some stuff too. Uh, and then talking to each other, uh, sending each other referrals. These are all absolutely forms of marketing. Um, so let's fast forward to what comes next. We're moving to Fort Dodge. I'm excited for you, by the way. When's this happening? We're not, we're not moving. We're we're just uh, going to be in practice. <laughs> Fair. We're throwing another building over into Fort Dodge. W when is this going down? Uh, we're hoping to open early to mid-April. Fantastic. And so let's talk about the next three to five years. Okay. So what does, uh, what does the center look like? Is it, how many locations are you going for? Are you going for more locations or are you going to streamline what you have now? What's that? What does that look like? Well, the interesting part, we, we were not looking for multiple locations when we first opened, <laughs> um, the the uh, location in Des Moines and the one in Grimes uh, were just one of those those things that happen uh, practices that were um, kind of going under and we saw potential opportunity to take those practices yeah. over and um, re-engineer them and build them up which is what we're in the process of doing um, both of those locations are doing very well and um, right. Similar in Fort Dodge, we saw an opportunity because we see a, a very, very um, steady stream of patients from the northern area of, of Iowa. Coming down um, here? Coming down here, yeah. Wow, we have, okay. Our, our patients travel quite a ways. We It's not unusual to have patients come from two or three hours away. So we have a, a pretty wide span. So we saw sure. potential opportunity um, putting another site, another location up there. Yeah, kind of growth by acquisition, right? I mean, if if it's uh, it's a solid strategy, solid strategy. Yes. Um, yes. Go ahead. Three to five years, probably no more sites. Um, I think for the work for us. Um, if our younger partner uh, decides in the future she wants to expand more with, um, you know, that that would be great. But I think four is probably going to be good. But we are, as Paul mentioned earlier, uh, looking at adding a fourth provider. Um, okay. Probably by the end of this year. And if all the clinics continue to grow as they have been and as, as we believe they will, um, there's the possibility of adding a fifth provider as well, which then allows us to provide more opportunities for you know, different staff members, different um, uh, support team members as well. So wow. that, that is, that's where we're, we're hopefully heading. Do you ever see yourself um... I know we're getting pretty close here on time, but do you ever see yourself uh, thinking about partnering up with um, <laughs> other body parts, <laughs> you know, other doctors with, I mean, right now you specialize in that area. Is that something that you see? I mean, how does that look? Do you kind of understand what I'm asking? <laughs> Probably not very clear on that. Yeah, that, um, I mean, we don't have a uh, a pathway developed for that, but sure. I, I think um, part of why we, we've been able to be successful as, as a partnership um, is we're open to looking at any new idea. Um, so, okay. it, you know, it's, you know, 
it's easy, I think, when an idea comes up to say, no, that's not us. That's not what we right. do. You take a bigger global picture of, you know, how could we fit that in? How mm -hmm. how could we make that work? Great um, question. How? And so, um, so, yeah, I mean, I don't know what the future holds. It could be could be multiple different um, avenues. Um, I know we'll continue with our our current teaching and research and development. Um, you know, back to the question about what do, what do I wish people knew about us? Yes. Uh, I I wish we could you know give everybody our research and have them read it and be able to understand <laughs> that what what we do and what we're saying um, it really doesn't come out of just lip service. It, right. We've we try you know year after year after year to research and prove what we're doing is effective and works. And that's as Mindy mentioned, that's somewhat unique in medicine. You go you go to your provider, you think you know the medicine is the same here as it is there. And right. it's not necessarily the case. Sure. Um, yeah. I think that uh, you said mentioned something there too about reading. And I like how you said we were talking about a wish, right? Not a reality. Um, where you wish you could have your your uh, patients read this material. And you know, some of them might really actually read it, but uh, even in my profession, um, in our in our business, getting even some owners to actually read uh, some material that they should be reading is sometimes like, uh, I don't know, fingernails on a chalkboard. It's just, yeah. it, it, it's harder. Um, so I, I, I respectfully understand where you're coming from on that. So listen, we've we've really covered a lot of ground on here. I am pleased as all get out that you guys were able to join us on the spotlight. Uh, for those who are watching, I highly encourage you to save this and come back a few times for an additional watch. Um, it's as as my first spotlight interview with um, a uh, with doctors in their own um, uh, firm or practice or a clinic, excuse me. Um, and then multiple ones. This is a, a very enlightening for us as well, because we really want to understand how, how that's handled. And we, I appreciate that. But as we begin to wrap up, I've got a few rapid fire questions that I want to ask you guys. These are quick one word answers or one sentence. It would be just fine, but no more. We're going to just blow through them. And then I'll just have Mindy, you answer. And then Paul, you answer. Uh, you guys ready for this? Ready? Bring it on. Let's go. What is the key to success for you? Passion. Both of us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> consistency. Oh, look at that. Good ones. What is your one piece of advice for other business owners? Don't try to do it alone. Very good. Uh, that's, that's hard to beat. That, that's hard. <laughs> oh, but you got to beat it, Paul. You got to come up with um, that. Um, it, you can do it. You just, have to, <laughs> you, just, you just have to learn and research. Be be open to learning. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. What is one book you're reading now or have read most recently? I just finished Think Again uh, by Adam Grant, and I'm in the middle of The Courage to Be Disliked, which is okay. Excellent, Paul. She, she passed on uh, Adam Grant's book to me, so I'm in the middle of that. Excellent. And I've also become intrigued with um, this idea of stoicism. So I'm reading Marcus Aurelius right now. Meditations? Yes. It's, Let's uh, go. Interesting. And uh, so, yeah, yeah doing some podcasts and, and delving into that. So Yes, that's great. Meditate. Marcus Aurelius is a, I'm a fan of Marcus. Uh, if you had to choose only one area of your business you could immediately improve tomorrow, what would it be? Uh, insurance companies. <laughs> that's a few <laughs> words, that's but the, let's just leave that there. That's, that's the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> this takes me back. Uh, okay, uh, Paul. <laughs> uh, well, that that is the true right answer. Um, I think uh, it's time, time in the day. We time we in the day work way too much. So great but answer, we, but we love it. So. Yeah, if you love what you do, right? 
Before we get into our final question of the day, uh, how can others learn more about you or your business? How can they get in contact? Yeah, they can check out our website at www.footanklecenteriowa.com. Um, learn more about us as people and about our practice, as well as check us out on Facebook too. We like to post a lot of interesting information there. They can also call uh, 515-639-3775. Perfect. And the last question of our interview today, what is the most inspiring to you today? That's a tough one. Go ahead. Um, I, I think what I've been inspired most by recently is the growth in our staff. Um, we've really seen wow. incredible change. And again, I, I sorry about the more than one word answer. <laughs> Back to our our um, uh, passion for educating our staff. Um, we had staff members that have just come so far in a very short period of time and their own personal growth and it helps our business, so. Powerful answer. All right, Mindy, you've had some time to think. You took all the words, so I'm gonna I, say <laughs> I'll share that answer. We don't, see, we're, we're doctors. We don't listen to rules, sorry. <laughs> okay. Well, as we finish up, I just want to express my gratitude to both of you. Uh, for real, it's been fantastic learning about your journey, both as businesses and as owners. Uh, thank you so much for letting me peek behind the scenes to understand more about you and your business. Thank you. Thank it's you very much. The pleasure was ours. Thank you. <laughs> I am really excited to see where you guys head next. Like for real, it's uh, I'm I'm uh, I'll be I'll be watching. <laughs> this has been uh, the Business Owner Spotlight Series with Mindy and Paul Dayton of Foot and Ankle Center of Iowa, and your host, me, Gabriel Moore, with Action Coach Business Coaching. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.